fucking composition, uh, bro. That's a slapper of a song. Reputation by Post Malone. Track one on 12 Carat Toothache. So that was a clip from our reaction to Post Malone's 12 Carat Toothache, which we did last night with our entire community on Patreon. And if you guys want to actually see our first reaction to this album, head over to the link in our description. We do these every week for the biggest releases in the industry. But let's get on with this album review of Post Malone's 12 Carat Toothache, his first album in three years. And I feel like with this one, he kind of fully ventured into pop. We saw him start to do that with Hollywood's Bleeding, but now he's kind of fully gone into that. So how did you feel about that approach? Well, I, I think when you attack it from an artist performance standpoint i think he was he did it really well you know like i don't think there was any miscues on his performance i mean the only performance that i wasn't a fan of has to be insane because it's a bit more of like that rap you know influence post malone that doesn't sound like something that you'd get off a of stony you know that's i think is like top quality rap post malone but i wouldn't say this is the first album that he fully goes pop with i, I think that it's always been prominent within his sound but this is an extremely radio friendly performance from him like there's a lot of hooks on here that i feel as if are going to get a lot of traction um you're going to see a lot of these songs charting and you're going to see a lot of these songs and performances and hooks you know for that matter also be trending on tiktok so it was interesting the way he was able able to do that while also um being able to develop super personal and you know let's say emotional performances example on something like reputation or you know i cannot be you know that's when that was another great performance from him even euthanasia like these are all songs where i feel as if post is experimenting and pushing the bag but i don't feel as if that was too prominent throughout the whole performance let's see i feel as if maybe he could have pushed more in different areas yeah and i feel like the potential is all there like you know how talented he is when you're listening to songs like reputation and i feel like that's where he's struggling drives the best when he's kind of expressing himself in depth with these emotional ballads that's facts and i think that i mean when you get certain songs like insane you start seeing that vocally it's a bit messy he can't really hold the flow for more than three seconds and vocally he's attempting maybe too much on a song like that where there's a different pitch every two seconds there's a different um tone to his voice and it just kind of felt a bit disastrous but Apart from that, I did like a lot of the vocal effects he used throughout the album. For That's example, the, the reverb that he was using, I thought really played well with the production because it added to the atmosphere and mood that he was trying to create within the music. So that was really cool. Apart from that, the choruses were kind of hit, hit or miss for me. I liked what he did on songs like Reputation and Cooped Up. But there's certain hooks like Love, Hate, Letter to Alcohol and Waiting for a Miracle that I felt like didn't have that stickiness that I expect from a Post Malone chorus. Um, but apart from that, yeah, it was a solid performance. And I think that, again, when he tries to really show you the extent of his vocal range and really stretch out those vocal notes, that's when you'll get the best side of Post Malone. And in terms of the way that he just executed on the project, um, I wish that, you know, he maybe went... Again, more with that side of himself where he's getting very vulnerable and he's really taking the time to flesh out his thoughts. And that's something that he didn't do all the time on all these songs. Yeah, he didn't do it all the time, but you will have your fair share of that. And we're going to dive deeper onto that in the content. But I also think when it comes to the artist performance, I love that raspiness to his voice. You know, I feel as if that's always something that I've enjoyed about Post Malone's music is that, you know, you're not going to get like angelic vocals like The Weeknd, you know, or like Bruno Mars for that matter. But when it comes to pop, he takes his own twist to it. There's this certain raw, genuine, and I would say also sort of um, rigid um, factor to his vocals that kind of immerse you there and they're like okay this feels genuine and heartfelt so I think the performance was good I think he did his thing um, I wasn't too crazy as far as you know boundary pushing and I think you had your fair share of hooks that missed and that didn't but for the most part yeah. it was a good performance I, th I thought that it was pretty dynamic vocally and one more thing I just want to add is that I thought it was really cool how on the outro song which is called new recording something 2020 yeah, it was a new recording 12 yeah. january 3rd what's cool is that that's actually a rough version of the song euthanasia because if you listen to it um on the outro he's kind of playing the acoustic guitar and he's singing the same lyrics that are on what ended up being the final version of the song on euthanasia so it's kind of cool to see his creative process within those two songs yeah so but let's go into the content all right because um you're going through a post malone album and you, I, I listen i didn't expect the most complicated you know lyrics especially that you know he's making pop friendly records and stuff that's going to be charting and you know stuff that you're going to see on the radio but i do love how he did give you a glimpse of what's been going on for the past three years example um on songs like i cannot be or let's say even love slash hate letter to alcohol 
alcohol, um, euthanasia, reputation, lemon tree. Um, I love these personal cuts from Post Malone because it shows that dynamic um, factor to his writing that this guy's not only a pop star, but he does have this edge to him where he'll let you in. But then again, you still do get, you know, those pop centric hooks, let's say on something like, I believe it was a wishing, a wasting angels, excuse me, um, something like when I'm alone, you know, you're getting, you're getting that still. So how did you feel about the content and did it keep you engaged throughout the whole track list? Yeah, it definitely kept me engaged for the most part, but I do feel like the lyrics overall were pretty surface level, even though you get songs like Euthanasia, you get songs like a love hate letter to alcohol. And I think the main theme of this album is Post Malone wanting to break free from his habits and, you know, specifically his alcohol addiction. And I think that it was cool to see how cathartic he got on this album. And I feel like that's a theme with a lot of albums that have come out in the 2020s where art artists are kind of um, going through their own therapy sessions. And mm -hmm. I feel like um, that's maybe a result of COVID and having all that time to kind of um, internalize all these thoughts and really figure out how these people want to move forward with their lives. So it was cool to get that. And it was cool to see um, the double-edged sword that his alcohol addiction is because, you know, he gets a sense of peace out of looking down at the bottom of a bottle. But at the same time, it's also, you know, turning his life into a reckless mess at times, as you're seeing on songs like Love, Love Hey, Letter to Alcohol, where he speaks about um, spiraling out of control. So mm -hmm. that was pretty cool. Apart from that, I mean, you do get your fair share of corny lyrics. I'm not going to lie. For example, on Insane, um, what he does here is he actually, you know, makes us sure that we're aware that he's on the second verse. And um, yeah, this <laughs> is what funny. he. Uh, this is what he. Uh, second has verse, to say. second verse, a. What was it? Yeah. Second verse, second verse, yay. Okay. Second verse, second verse again. <laughs> okay, no, I get that. Yeah, and but like that, that's you could come to expect that with a post Malone record. I don't mean it's good writing, but I mean you know I I, I wasn't I, I wasn't thrown off by it because I did expect that sort of stuff within the writing as a whole. But I think overall the content was good. You know, for a pop record and for what Post Malone was trying to do, kept you engaged. There was different um, you know highs and lows within the album as well for where Post Malone's mentality was at and I think that that was super well displayed throughout the track list and I understood the concept after you know even two or three listens so I enjoyed the content throughout it but let's go into the features right because the features are interesting I want to start off with Doja Cat on I Like You she has been ripping up every single verse that she's been laying down and I love what you tweeted about the Ninth Wonder thing because I want to see her you know really experiment with her hip hop bite because she's delivering some you know some really you know I would say quality verses in 2022 too. So how did you like her in the setting of the album? Yeah, she absolutely slid on that song and I feel like her vocals were clean, they were polished and it's almost as if that production was made for her. Exactly. And I feel like... I don't want to say it for every feature that's on here, but I feel like, especially with Doja Cat and The Weeknd, um, they definitely... Um, outshined Post Malone on those two songs yeah, also because those productions were catered more towards their sounds in my opinion yeah and, and I think the perfect middle point let's say for a feature was actually the Kid Laroi feature uh, well Kid Laroi I say it like that because you know the French accent from Montreal but um, you know uh, Wasting Angels was actually nice because you get this more minimalistic production and um, Kid Laroi has a fantastic vocal performance throughout it and I also like how their energies were able to meet in the middle and it didn't feel maybe let's say like a Doja Cat or The Weeknd situation where they did I'll play, you know, Post Malone on there. Yeah. But I like that feature as a whole. What about Roddy Rich on Cooped Up? Because this was a single going into the album. And it's not that, you know, Roddy's missing on a lot of the stuff that he's putting out. It's just I didn't like the way that, you know, he entered this verse, kind of stuttering and kind of felt a bit awkward going into it. And vocals were fine, but I mean it's nothing, you know, it's nothing that you haven't heard from Roddy before. You know, Bro, I'm, I'm rooting for Roddy so much right now, but it just seems like lately everything he's dropping. Um, isn't that great? I feel like he's in a bit of a dry spell. And like you were saying, I felt like I didn't like the cadence that he had approached this song with. It felt like he was doing this, you know, high pitched auto tune flow. And I didn't really fuck with it all that much. And I feel like it would have been better as a song cooped up without Roddy's contributions yeah, at all. And I was saying that during the stream yesterday too, yeah. how I would have just preferred to have that, you know, post Malone bridge and I would have been okay it with it. It wasn't necessary. It to wasn't be honest, too necessary. You know? But listen, regardless, I don't think he did bad vocally. I just think that it felt awkward for what the context. What of the about song. Gunna though? What did you think of his performance? Oh my goodness. Listen, Gunna is experimenting with his pop bag and I absolutely love to see it. This just proves, you know, that Gunna has that star um aura to him. You know, he could play on pop records and it's not gonna sound like something that you heard maybe, you know, on, on Drip Too Hard, you know? So that's what I like about this song is that it's showing you that double side to Gunner that me, we, you know, you and I never even knew he could do. There's actually a song he released this year called Banking on Me that has this similar kind of emotional tone that oh, really? he brought to this track. It. 
definitely recommend it. One of his best songs, to be honest. So, yeah, Gunna definitely took a W with that one. And overall, the features were cool. I like that he didn't bloat the album with features. That's facts. They came in um, at appropriate times. And overall, they were they were good features. Yeah, they were definitely good features. Added to the track list, but didn't do much more than that. But let's get on to the production. Um, this is the best part of the whole album. I feel facts. as if this atmospheric production that, you know, transcends throughout the track list is really captivating. And, you know, you're not just going to get like synth heavy production on this you're gonna get a lot of guitar you're gonna get some country style um productions that you know you're gonna fall in love with and that you're gonna fuck with and um i also love how certain productions you know not only match post malone's vibe but they'll also match the features vibe so example um on something like i believe i like you with doja cat you know that sounds like something that could be on planet her or even something like gun as i cannot be you know that's unorthodox for gun and post malone but it makes sense in the context of the song so why do you think this soundscape was so well done and you know why do you think you know this may be one of the best produced pop records that we've gotten let's say maybe in the first half of the year yeah it's one of the better produced pop records in recent memory it's not you know exceptional by any means but i think the best instrumentals on here were produced by louis bell and i feel like on songs like reputation you're getting these compositions where um, there's a lot of layering that goes behind the beats mm -hmm. and you're getting for example the beginning with a guitar riff then you're getting these synths a, a storm of synths that kind of seeps through then you're getting yeah. violins so I like when he kind of has these beats that progress and build throughout the track list. There's a couple of moments like that, but then you're also getting your fair share of more generic pop trap beats that aren't, you know, that great, but everything sounded polished. I found the mixing and mastering was great. And I also thought that the sequencing from song to song was really smooth as well. And that's something that is always redeeming to any production on any album. And um, yeah, apart from that, I thought that it was also cool to see him, you know, tap onto one right now, which sounded like um, a beat that you would have found on Don FM where you have, um, you know, these 80s synths that are really prominent. So it was good overall. I liked the diversity within the production, and I think it is the strongest component of the album. It is the strongest yeah. component. So on that note, I think we're going to give it a great rating. It was a great produced album. Um, but let's get into the replay value, all right? So Post Malone hasn't dropped an album in three years, and a lot of his fans were hungry for new music. And, you know, people wanted him to go into different directions. You know, people were saying different things. But I feel as if this album um, does have replay value. I just, I'm not sure how it's going to sit with me because, you know, with all the quality and the good performances and the good features um i found the pacing of the album a little hard to get into like towards the end of the album you're kind of like okay you know I, I gotta i gotta maybe re-up i gotta re-listen to this you know another time or go back to it so it's a slow burner it, it is a slow burner and, I, and that definitely affects my replay value plus um these songs are, are very are, are geared towards more of a mainstream and, and pop audience and i i like them i appreciate them i think they're good i think they were well crafted but i I don't know if I'm going to take them and put them into my playlist, but I do have my fair share of songs that I'm going to go into and revisit um, from occasion. So how do you feel about the track list and how do you think it's going to live on with you? I think you dropped it at the right time. Like I see a lot of people kind of playing this in the summertime at barbecues, at parties and whatever else. So I think that um, it definitely speaks to the season that it came out in. And in terms of how I'm going to like listen to it, um, I feel like ever since Stoney, well, discluding Stoney, but Beer Bongs, Ben Benley's, and also Hollywood's Bleeding, those are two albums where I ended up just plucking out songs instead mm -hmm. of going through full listens. And I feel like this album is going to fall victim to that again for me, where there isn't too much that I want to revisit because I feel like um, the track list is littered with a lot of those very pop-friendly songs where, you know, it's kind of background music. Like, if it plays in the radio, I won't turn it off, but it's just, it's not something that really speaks to me all that much, so it's not really, you know for my taste but i still think there's a lot of um a lot of value behind a lot of those tracks as well absolutely and it's a quality track list so i think you could find value within that but realistically like you know I, i'm gonna give the replay value mid but I, I i don't think that it's you know that's a detriment to the quality of the album it's just like for my own taste and what i want to take out of it that's kind of where i'm top at with three it. songs top three songs that you're gonna out, keep in your rotation um reputation i want to take um lemon tree and i want to take um euthanasia i think those are the three that i'm taking how about you what do you grab i would go reputation number one number two i'm gonna go with cooped up and number three give me love hate letter to alcohol yeah and those all, are my three favorites all great songs but okay let's get on to our final thoughts all right so looking into this album it was interesting because you know we we like to cover post malone because he does have a hip-hop background and you know he came up through that scene and you know he relieved stoney that was extremely you know hip-hop oriented more melodic on that end and you could see how you know he's progressing throughout his career he's fully transitioning into that 
pop um, lane that you know allows them to be able to make these super radio friendly records and I could appreciate that because it's not like you're saying you know he's making these super radio friendly records and they sound bad no they're well crafted they're super well produced and even the cast that he was able to bring on to this track list was nice to see you know Gunna, Doja Cat, The Weeknd, Kid, La uh, Kid Laroi, say Kid Laroi again um, you know even um, let's say something like Fleet Foxes you know indie rock band that you know provided um, some instrumentation for Love Hate Letter to Alcohol I think there was a lot of re redeeming qualities within it my only thing with the album is that I don't know if I'm gonna take you know those pop friendly records and throw them into my playlist so that's where I'm at with the album and that's kind of where I'm at, you know? Yeah, I think for myself, um, I think a lot of Post Alone fans are going to get a lot of enjoyment out of this record because Absolutely. it feels like his most honest album. It feels like a lot of thought went into it and I do like, um, you know, how vulnerable he got in certain moments. But my biggest problem with the album personally is just the fact that it seems like Post Alone did have a vision to create this cohesive album where he's focusing on his self-destruction and his desire to change his life around for the better. But, you know, that's well communicated throughout those slow emotional ballads where he really excels. But then as you go deeper into the track mm -hmm. list, you see that it is littered with these generic pop sounds that don't really fit into the themes that he's trying to kind of go for within the album. So that made it a bit of a drag to listen to for me. And apart from that, I mean, you know, he showcases these spots and splashes of his talent. But I just feel like at the end of the day, he kind of fails to commit to these more daring and risk-taking ideas that he does have a couple of moments of within the track list. So to me, he didn't really get out of his comfort zone too much. I would have liked to have seen him fully commit to the ideas that he did present. But I mean, apart from that, it was a pretty cool listen. It was chill. Um, it didn't leave me that disappointed. And I do think that um, if you're looking for, you know, fast tempo bangers, this is not the Post Alone record yeah, for you. This is definitely not it's it. much more of a slower burner. It's much more meditative. But I did appreciate, you know, the new approach that he brought on here. And I think that there are a lot of redeeming qualities, such as his stunning vocals and the production. So overall, I'm going to say that it was a good album. It was I think a, good a lot listen. of people are going to enjoy it. And I think that um, it's going to be definitely great for the summertime. Absolutely. A lot of people are going to go to this track list for summertime vibes, barbecues, parties, you know, whatever you want. But listen, guys, let us know how you feel about this new Post Malone record in the comment section. Let us know where we fucked up and let us know where we got it right. Thank you guys so much for watching this review. And if you guys are new to NFR Podcast, please hit the subscribe button and like this video if you enjoyed our review. Thank you so much for watching today and we'll catch you on the next one.